Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Here's a quick tutorial on how to texture a tank in Blender. This model here was sent in by a loyal Patreon supporter. Thank you, Morris. We're gonna do three things in this tutorial. We're gonna UV unwrap the model, then we're gonna bake an edge mask, and then we're gonna use that edge mask and play with some nodes to make a texture for the tank. Now before we start UV unwrapping, we're gonna make a new image texture node. We're going to create a new image. We're going to set the dimensions to 2048 to 2048. And we're going to name that UV test. We're going to set the generated type to UV grid. And we're going to create the image. Now we're going to plug the color from that node into the base color of the principal node. And we're also going to add a node wrangler. And as you can see, this model already has a very simple material on it. So we're going to have to apply this material to the model first. And once we do that, in shaded mode, you're going to see that this new texture is going to appear on the model. Now it's currently flat because we didn't unwrap it yet, but if we unwrap it, you're going to see a very distorted checker pattern on the surface of the model. And this is just because it's not UV unwrapped correctly. So let's move the turret upwards a little bit so we can work on it more easily. And now before we start UV unwrapping, we have to make sure to remove any modifiers which are on the model at the moment. So we're just going to disable the bevel modifier and the bool tool modifier. Now let's start with this face we have in the front of the turret right here. We can select this entire face and then we're gonna deselect all the edges that are inside the face, which don't have any angles. We're gonna use the brush tool with C to deselect some of the edges in the middle. And now we only have all the bordering edges of this face or the surface selected. So now if we press Control E and we mark the seam, the seams are gonna be marked and we can just UV unwrap that face. We can now select the surface with L and then if we press U and unwrap the model, you're going to see that the surface is going to appear in the UV editor. The problem is that right now, the surface is a little bit distorted in the UV editor. And as you can see, the texture is not appearing on there very clearly. And that's a very easy thing to fix. When we unwrap the model, you're going to have a little menu in the bottom left. It's going to be called the unwrap menu. And in that little menu, we have to change the method from angle based to conformal. And as you can see now, the UVs are not distorted anymore. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other large surface of the turret, which means we're going to select all the faces on top, and then we're going to deselect the edges in the middle. And then we're just going to mark the seams and unwrap the surface. Now we can easily unwrap this little ring around the commander hatch by just marking one edge on this little loop. And now let's separate this face that goes all the way around the turret. And to do that, once again, we just have to mark all the bordering edges, which are going to be the ones with big angles. So we're going to select the entire edge loop on the bottom. And then we're also going to select these edges in the front here and mark them as seams as well. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we also have to select the edges around some of the objects that we see around this turret, like this hole over here. So since a Boolean was used to make this hole, it's going to be really hard to just select the loop. But what we can do is select all the faces around this hole. And then once again, just use a brush select to deselect the edges that we don't want. Now we're going to do the same thing with some of these other objects around this turret, which means we're going to select the edges around the base and we're going to mark those as seams. And when we select something, we can just zoom out a little bit, go to wireframe mode, and then just move the selection around. And this way, we're going to be able to double check uh, to make sure that we didn't select anything that we don't want to select. Because if we did, then we're also going to see that moving as well. After we finish UV unwrapping the model, we're going to delete the checker texture from the material. And we're also going to delete the principled node. Now we're going to add a bevel node, and we're also going to add a geometry node. And then we're going to connect those through a vector math node. Now we're gonna plug that through an invert node and we're gonna plug that into the material output. Now let's switch to cycles render and we have to set the vector math node to dot product instead of add. And now the edges of the model are gonna be shown as white. And you can adjust the width of the edges by just sliding the radius. Now we're gonna add another image texture node and we're gonna create a new image. We're gonna name that turret mask. We're gonna set the generated type to blank and we're gonna check 32-bit float. Now we can load that image in the image editor, and this is where we're going to bake this edge mask. So in the render properties tab, find the bake menu and set the bake type to emit. Now I had an error pop up here, which said object is not enabled for rendering. To fix that, press F2 and then copy the name of the object. Then search for any object with this name and make sure that rendering is enabled in this menu here. And once you do that, you should be able to bake. Then hit the bake button and just wait a couple of minutes. Now we can see the edge mask in the image editor. So we're going to plug that into the material output instead of all these other nodes that we just created. And as you can see right away, the edge mask is visible on the surface of the model. Now we're going to create the principal node one more time and we're going to plug that between the image texture and the material output. And then we're going to add a mix RGB node between the image texture and the principal BSDF node. Now we can use this image texture to control the colors that are displayed on the model. So we can replace the black and white colors on the edge mask with any other color that we want. 
Now we can also control the intensity and the presence of each color using a color ramp node. But of course, we don't want to keep the red and yellow colors. Instead, we want to use the colors of the tank. So I'm going to copy the hex code of the material that was on this tank before. And I'm going to paste that hex code into the hex code of color one in the mix RGB node. And the second color is going to be the same except a little bit darker. Now we're going to add a math node in between the image texture node and the color ramp node. And we're going to set that to power. Now we can use the exponent slider to control the width of the edge wire. And then just to make things a little bit more interesting we're going to add a noise texture node and we're going to use that to control the exponent and that way the edges are going to look a little bit more messy now we can play around with some of the settings in the uh, noise texture node and as you can see that's going to make the edge wire look a lot more realistic we can of course add another color ramp node between these two nodes and that's just going to give us a little bit more control over the texture now after we finish making the edge wire we're going to duplicate all the nodes but we're going to change color one to white and color two to black and if we plug that into the roughness that's going to control how shiny each color is so of course we want to make the worn edge is a little bit more shiny than the base color so we're going to set color one to a light gray and color two to a dark gray color because the darker the color the more shiny the surface is going to be now we're going to add another image texture node and in this image texture node i'm going to load up an image of some black and white smudges that I downloaded from the internet. Now I'm gonna add another mix RGB node and I'm gonna plug the color of that mix RGB node into the first color of the previous mix RGB node. And then I'm gonna use the new image texture node that I created and I'm gonna plug that into the factor of the second RGB node. And then I can set the colors of this texture to anything I want. As you can see, you can get some pretty cool results with this. Now, of course we want the colors of this texture to be a little bit more realistic. So we're gonna keep them very similar to what we had before. Once again, we're just gonna copy the hex code. We're gonna paste that into color one and then color two is going to be the same, just a little bit darker. Now, if we add a node wrangler to this image texture, we can use that to control how the texture is going to appear on the surface. For example, we can change the scale a little bit. And now you can also add another color ramp node here to control how the colors are appearing on the surface. And that's pretty much the easiest way you can make any object look a little bit more realistic with some basic textures. If you just repeat this on all the other parts of the tank, you're going to have a very cool texture. Thank you for watching and I will see you around in the next one.